Welcome to Mind and Heart. I'm Sister John Dominic, a foundress of the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. It has been my joy to have been involved in Catholic education for over 30 years. One of my privileges for the community has been to create Lumen Ecclesiae Press, a publishing organization that develops educational resources used now by over 500 schools around the United States and the world. Lumen Ecclesiae is our call to magnanimity, our call to be large soul, to do something greater for the church. So today, I invite anyone interested in becoming a saint to join with us as we unpack the deep beauty, mystery, and certainties of our faith to transform our lives so that we can know, love, and serve God with our mind and heart. Welcome to this episode of Mind and Heart, and I'm very happy to have uh, today with me Sister Mary Michael. And actually, this con- our conversation today is going to be probably something that our listeners and maybe a lot of people were not aware of, but it's really like the beginnings of the beginning of education and virtue. Um, and before we kind of dive into the, the background of that, Maybe you could just tell our listeners about yourself, a little bit about your vocation, what you're doing now, or, or something when you entered, or sure. just so they can know who you are. Sure. Introduce yourself. Thank you, sister. Yeah. So I entered in 2002, just yeah. five years after the community was founded, yeah. and I was studying occupational therapy before I entered, and I mm-hmm. met the community, and I always knew that I wanted to help in some way, I wanted to help others. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was, I remember helping a patient at a hospital and realizing that she needed more than just physical help. Oh, um, wow. And I wanted yeah. to give her spiritual help, but I knew I couldn't do that in the environment that I was in that was actually against the regulations. And so that I think that prompting and many other things led me to <laughs> enter the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. So I got my degree after making vows and went into the classroom for a few years, and then not much time after that began um, being a principal in a school. And I was principal for four years and then came back to the mother house. And now I am the director of our formation of the novices and the postulants of the mother house. And it's such a joy to teach our young sisters. Yeah. They're so on fire for the faith and want to live our life fully. So. Eager, exactly. They're very you know. eager. Yeah, well, thank but you. You have that experience of teaching. Oh, yeah. Too. Oh, that was just, it was like a shot in the arm every time I went and taught them. <laughs> it's like, oh, they're just eating this up. I'm like, yeah. can I have more? And um, right. yeah, it was really such a such a joy, you know, to, to be with them. So it really is, you're right, it, it is a very special privilege, you know. Yeah. So I think we go back, I mean, of course, being sisters and community, but um, when you were um, those years of being a principal, and I was a uh, principal at the time, um, you were, you know, we as we all kind of do, we sit around and talk at recreation. I always tell that tell people that's really when we get our best ideas, you mm-hmm. know, about schools, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we were just talking, and you're like, you know, um, we're being asked, like a lot of people are uh, across the United States and the different dioceses, which to me is very exciting because you see a resurgence of. Yes. Um, the kind of the essentials of, of Catholic education. So yeah. one part that you were looking at carefully was, you know, how do we define Catholic identity? And I think as being uh, Dominican, and, and you were kind of approaching it the same way I did as a, as a principal, that what can we bring as Dominicans? And of course, it's the virtue education, you know, mm-hmm. um, and let people to see that, you know, happiness is living a virtuous life. Mm-hmm. And, and that can be a part not only of the identity of the school that's under the leadership of Dominicans, but also really it's it's grounded in in the church and the in the life of the church, or going back to St. Thomas Aquinas, the you know, how was the kind of foundational of moral theology. And right. I remember you you bringing to me um, a program that had been put in the in the school, you know, um, and asking, you know, can can this be defined um, as Catholic identity? Maybe you want to just kind of share with me some of the the questions that we had at that sure. time. And really not necessarily um, being critical of it, you know, because right. it's it's good in of itself. Right. But the question is, is it enough? So right. I, maybe that's what y'all let you kind of share what you were asking me at the time. Yes. Yeah. So I remember having this conversation. I remember we were trying to make it work. Yeah. We were there for a couple of years, and this was the Catholic identity goal of the school. 
And it was really about character formation. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of public schools now, they are using character formation for their kids because they realize that it's a need, but they can't have God in the picture. Yeah. And I think we were trying to take this character education formation program that was secular and uh, you know, the language was very catchy and there was great resources for the teachers and training. And okay, how can we make this Catholic? Yeah. Yeah. And the more we looked at it and it was like, okay, great. So the kids, they need to be good citizens for society is right. the goal of a right. program like this, which we all agree that's important. But how can we make this program uh, more far reaching? Can we make them citizens for heaven and yeah. saints and formation of lifelong virtue? And it just felt like we were trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Right, and right. no matter what you did, the root of the program was about the individual. It is very much a uh, rooted in my understanding of how I grow in character and these decisions I make is really about me being successful. It's about me being a good leader. And it's about me being, uh, if, I, if I do all these things and if, if I you know, display these kind of traits, then I can be successful in yeah. this culture, in yeah. this society. And I think what we're realizing is that's not a Catholic view. We can't make this worldly secular view fit into the Catholic view. And, 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 and exactly, and, and actually the same thing you're describing really kind of reinforces a, a conversation I just recently had with another educator in, in California. And um, he was making the point too, you know, he said that um, what attracted him to disciple of Christ, education and virtue was that we see that it's rooted in grace. It's rooted in our baptism. Yes. I mean, it's you mentioned, you know, like we want we want the children that that enter into a, a Catholic school in that environment to see that, okay, yeah, I, I can be I, I can be a good Catholic. I can love, uh, you know, love my faith. I'm I want to be a citizen of heaven. But it's not like it's a it's a dualism. It's right. it's not like a either or. It's a both and. You know, right. and I think what was lacking. Because we, I mean, we were trying hard to make it work, yes. you know, and uh, and it couldn't because what we have, um, you know, we, we think about the, the phrase that St. Thomas Aquinas said, that grace perfects nature, yes. you know. So that was how do we live, as you said, a good citizens on a, on a natural level. And even if we look at the the four cardinal virtues, I mean, they, they are the human virtues that, that right. everyone can, you know, have, you know, prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. But yeah. What we have in our Catholic tradition is so rich and so mm -hmm. much more, you yes. know, um, because these are infused in our baptism. You know, mm -hmm. when we're living out the grace of baptism, mm -hmm. and that's what we want the, the children to do, and we want the the, par the parents to do, and the teachers to do. And really, grace is our participation in God's life, and. He makes us holy. We don't make ourselves holy, you know. Right. Um, right. So I would imagine making this shift, as we know, there were a few challenges that came <laughs> yes. with that, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which will we can leave some of those things untold, right? right. Um, but uh, but what it did which I loved, um, and I've hopefully you all had the same experience, is that, because, so if you, you, you had, I guess you can, can kind of call it, it was like the perfect storm, you know, because you were having this experience, and then if you take something out, you have a vacuum, you have to fill something in. Yes. And on, on my side as being um, a principal, and I think this is really the beauty of community is that we do so much in collaboration, even though we're kind of all in other parts of the country, mm -hmm. you know, and probably, probably a lot of people, um, my teachers and the people in the building probably didn't really realize that I was helping you and we're doing this, you mm -hmm. know, together and probably vice versa, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I had teachers coming to me and these are, you know, they've been catechists and they've been Catholic teachers, but they're like, sister, I don't know how to teach virtue. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. it was hard for them to admit it. You know, you know they're mm -hmm. like, I, I understand what the words mean, but how in the world am I going to teach temperance to a, a kindergartner? You know, mm -hmm. how do you teach, you know, affability mm -hmm. to a first grader? Or, mm -hmm. you know, I were you getting kind of that same reaction? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, from your faculty and staff, not not in a 
rebellious way, but just kind of like right. humbling, like, I don't know what to do. Right. Um, and we come from that generation. It's my generation and not, not far before it, that we weren't catechized ourselves. Yeah. So to ask teachers to teach the faith in such a really fundamental part of our faith, the virtues, and that we were talking about the grace builds on nature and all of these virtues are rooted in Christ. It's not something that we, it's not a self-help program right. that we're going to, you know, go through this. It's almost a perfectionistic way of looking at our, yeah. our formation. The, I think that the teachers definitely needed help. They needed a lot of support and we had that in the other program, but then it's okay. Now teach the virtues. Oh, okay. So how do we do that? How do we do it? Yeah. <laughs> and what is it? I think a, lot, a big obstacle was the language. Yeah. So you're going to teach a student what circumspection means. Yeah. They can't even say that word. Right. You're right. A lot of, you never know what may come out with it. Yeah. Yes. And so I think that's where, you know, really, again, you know, just kind of putting our, our, right. our, our, our thoughts together, you know, that yes. so as we're, as I'm here, you know, talking to my teachers and encouraging them and you were there and then also collaborating with some other sisters, you know, they, we kind of all, who knows, it may have been, at, I don't know if it was in recreation one night, but ever this whole thing about, you know, what does a virtue look like and sound like? Yes. You know, I think that's really what makes a disciple of Christ education yes. and virtue different than anything else are the, the virtue cards yeah. that, uh, where we have the illustrations right. that, that show it. And then, uh, and then the words that kind of show what it sounds like. Right. And then also, um, you said it earlier, you know, that really what makes a Catholic education um, you know, distinct is that we want them to become saints, you know, right. and, and what is a saint, you know, where they, in order for someone to be a saint, they have to have demonstrated mm -hmm. that they've lived virtue heroically. And right. if, if, children and adults and parents don't know what the virtues are, how can we even begin to practice them right. heroically, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, even though it was, it was challenging kind of for probably both of us in different ways, yeah. I found it very exciting. I yes. mean, what, what were some of the things that, that you, you all did to help give that support? I think, well, we, a lot of the support that we received was from what you were working right, on yeah. with your teachers <laughs> and what you shared with them. And that looks like, sounds like changed everything. Yeah. It gave them the visual, seeing the card, seeing what children and, and adults illustrated to show, okay, if I wanna practice modesty, and this was actually life-changing for me. Yeah. Oh, modesty isn't just modesty in the way I dress, it's also in the way I speak, right. the way yes. I behave. And all I can, right now, the image in my mind is a little student holding up their test paper with the A on it, bragging about their grade on their yeah. test paper. And that was a way, obviously it works for adults, it works for children that I learn what modesty is. They learn from example. Yes. And our teachers, I remember you coming to the school yeah. and explaining to the teachers, look at these yourself, see how you're practicing these virtues and read through a few cards a night before you go to bed, study them. And this is this is the way you learn it by actually trying to practice the virtues. Right, and themselves. right, and I think that was the beautiful thing coming yeah. down there talking to your teachers is that, you know, generally, I mean, in my experience as being an administrator, anytime you introduce something new, it's like, oh, you know, because it's fear. Yes. It's like, oh, how can I do one more thing? You yes. know, and am I going to be able to fit this in of the day? But as and sometimes it's just because they. Uh, they're not familiar with it and, yes. and they have to like learn it. And I can mm -hmm. see when we came and we were, we were showing them these resources, you could almost feel, you know, I, when I use the word tension, I'm not saying that there was a conflict. It's just yeah. a tension of tension yeah. of like, um, I, I don't know what to do. You know, right. you could almost feel that decreasing. And I know, you know, myself working with my own faculty and staff as we began to, provide this for them, they were more comfortable in mm -hmm. using it. Mm -hmm. And um, our culture in the school went from, not that it was negative, but it gives you, when you begin to have this language of virtue, it creates a more positive mm. culture within the school, yes, you know, definitely. and because you're using different words and you're, and you, and your mindset changes, yes. you know, because you're striving for goodness and yes. you're trying to say, the children can live good. I don't know. I don't know if you had that same Definitely. experience yet. Definitely. Yeah. It was a positive. It's what one of the teachers when I was teaching at uh, 
Spiritu Sancto yeah. said, it's positive peer pressure. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to get the kids to influence each other to practice virtue. And you point out virtue in the students that you see that you want other students to follow their example. And it's what you ask the teachers to do. They have to be witnesses yeah. in order to teach the faith. Yeah. Um, and, when, and when we think about goodness, you know, it's not that, you know, we strive for the pursuit of goodness, the habit of doing good, you know, I mean, you know, God is going to, God will love us no matter what. He can't, he can't, he's not going to love us more or less, right. like if I'm more good or if I, I've got right. more virtues. Okay. Yes. The reason that we want to, you know, to, to live this way is because it, it begins, there's a harmony and an order. There's an integrated mm -hmm. life. Yes. And the more that we're living with this good disposition, the more free yes. we are. It's a more freedom for excellence, you yes. know, and not that we become more, you know, pleasing to, to God, but but what happens is is that we're more fully alive, mm -hmm. and that you know we're living as mm -hmm. how how He intended us to be, yes. you know, how He first planned. You know, it's it's a right. response to all that God has done. You know, right. Um, so and and just a little bit of time that we've, um, you know, we got a few more minutes left here. This has been a, a great conversation. I I don't know if there's anything that in this that you remembered that mm -hmm. you'd like to share mm -hmm. um, yeah. just personally when you began to have these resources, um, how maybe even now since there was more of a, a focus towards true Catholic identity, if you felt like the culture right. of the school, anything different? Um, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I remember you sharing once, sister, when you were principal, that one of the things you did as students came into the office and maybe they had made a bad choice and we're talking through that decision with them and pulling out a, a virtue card and saying, I want you to practice, I want you to work on this virtue and pray for the grace to practice this virtue. And I remember uh, I, I did this several times yeah. after we started introducing the virtues in the school and it, it was really helpful for ta not only talking through the problem with them, but giving them a positive, that this isn't just about you being in trouble. Yeah. and you being disciplined for what you did. That's part of the story. The other part is really, we, we want you to be happy. And yeah. the way that you can be happy right. is living this, this kind of life. It has to be a habit for you. Yeah. So um, I remember this one, I still actually have the little card that this boy I gave, and it was on patience. And I gave the, the boy the card and we talked about it. And he, he just needed to work on being being patient and waiting his his turn waiting in line and anyway he came back to my office three weeks later with his little card and he said sister do you have any more mine ended up going through the dryer oh. <laughs> and it was just tattered and worn and he had carried it around with him every time i saw him in the hall he would show me he had his little card as he was going with his class oh. to lunch yeah. or in line to the bathroom and i thought this is something that is it is changing the culture of the school it's yeah. changing the way that the students see discipline yes. and see that relationship with their principal, that this person is out for my good. They want me to be happy. Right, right. And that, that's what we want for our children in Catholic schools. We want them to know that uh, this, what they learned when they were in Catholic school is something that they will will be happy practicing for the rest of their lives. Right, and that hopefully they can, you know, emulate that um, as they get older, whatever their vocation yes. may be yes. and, and everything. Well, Sister, thank you. I, I just, you know, this is such a great opportunity as we begin, you know, with our with the podcast, you know, talking yes. about Lumen Ecclesia Press, yes. the works we're doing, and then also, you know, with Disciple of Christ, Education and Virtue. I think it's great for our, our listeners to hear that, you know, that, all of these things, you know, um, as, as I was even talking with uh, Mother Assumpta, you know, it's like um, what we're doing isn't, it's kind of like a natural thing. We're kind of being moved forward and we're, we're, yes. we're responding to our Dominican charism in our life. And all of these things that kind of came together, like I said, it was almost like a, the, the perfect storm, you know, <laughs> that you were there and I was here and it kind of pushed us to do this quickly, you know. Yes. But um, we really want to continue these conversations to help people understand it, you know, see the the beauty of living this way, and not just necessarily in school, but in our own personal lives. As I'm sure you've seen, as the is your formation with the Definitely. sisters that they desire to live virtuously. Yeah. So, 
Um, if you were interested in listening, learning more about Education of Virtue, you can look at our website, educationofvirtue.com. Go to the Sisters of Mary and look it up. We've done all sorts of videos, and then um, hopefully this will be the first of many conversations. We'd love to have you back, Sister, to uh, keep the conversation going. You've got a wealth of experience you, uh, to, to offer. So, And also, as we, as we know, that all that we're doing nourishes our mind and our heart, you know, our intellect, um, you know, the, the knowledge that we know as we begin to study these things so that our minds, our hearts can be drawn to it, you know, to love of God and, and to really live more fully our relationship with God. So thank you for your work, sister. Thank and, you uh, for your sister. Oh, no, I loved it. It was great working with you in the beginning. All this fruit <laughs> came from that. From that I know that one. Openness happened. to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, thank you, sister. Thank you, God sister. Bless you. <laughs> If you like this episode of the Mind and Heart Podcast, I invite you to click on the next available podcast and continue to enrich your mind, heart, and soul.